Hey there, YouTube. Welcome to the channel. My name is Alex Hubbard. I'm a senior systems administrator with over 15 years of experience in the IT industry. Today, we're going to work on installing uh, Ubuntu in a virtual machine uh, in our VMware ESXi host. And uh, we're going to install cover installing VMware tools on it as well. So I've already got our ISO downloaded. I've got it uploaded to our data store in our ISOs folder. Let's go ahead and build up a Ubuntu machine. So let's go create register VM. I'm going to create a new virtual machine and we'll do lab Ubuntu. Oops, did I spell that right? Lab Ubuntu. I yeah, I spelled that right. I uh, can't spell today. <laughs> All right, so we're going to select the guest OS family, which is Linux. And we are going to find Ubuntu, which is all the way at the bottom, 64-bit edition. We're going to click Next. We are going to put it on. I Since our last video here, I've added another drive, uh, just a mechanical drive, to our Optiplex 7010 in the background that we're using as our lab machine. And we're going to click Next because I needed more space. Um, we'll, we'll bump it up to 2 gigs of RAM. We'll be generous and give it a 60 gig hard drive. And one CPU should be okay. We will put it on the VM network for now because we want it to go out to the internet. And we're going to pick our ISO here where it says host device. We're going to change it to data store ISO file. And we're going to come to our lab DSO2 and our ISOs folder and find our Ubuntu ISO. I'm going to click select. We're going to go to next. We're going to finish it. Dismiss this message that says you've, you've successfully created it. And we're going to check off our new machine and we're going to power it on. And we are going to go to the console button and open it up. All right. So if you just wanted to boot it off of a live CD or ISO, you can just try it. In this case, we're actually going to install it. So we can click the install button. Uh, you can select your, your uh, language. Uh, we're going to use English. Do install. Again, I'm in the United States, so we're going to do English US for both options. Click on the continue button. Um, you can do either or. Uh, I typically do a normal installation, so I get the GUI and stuff. Um, and then, although I think minimal installation will give you the GUI as well, but I, I do the full gamut because that's what I'm going to end up using it for. Um, we'll allow it to download updates. Um, you can leave this unchecked. I don't have anything special that it would need to install drivers and things for. So we'll click continue. We'll erase the disk. That's fine. Install now. It's going to warn you that it's going to write the changes to disks. That's fine. You can click continue. Um, I'm in Massachusetts, but this is the closest we'll get to the time zone. So we'll leave that. That's fine. We'll click continue. You would select your wherever you are or close to it uh, at this screen so that it sets the time correctly. Okay. We'll give it a username. Lab user. Lab Ubuntu. Oops, I can't spell that. Uh, so the computer name, we'll give it lab Ubuntu. Username is fine, lab user. Give it a password. Give it a password. And require my password to log in. We'll click continue. And this is where it's going to start copying files and do its install stuff. This will take a few minutes to do. Uh, so I will let this run through. And um, we'll come back when this is done installing and log in and get VMware tools and stuff installed so you can see how you get that how that works on VMware. All right, Ubuntu has finished installing in our VMware environment here. We're going to click the restart now button and it is going to reboot. I have found for whatever reason uh Ubuntu does not like this part of the uh, installation. You can see it's flashing. Please remove the media. There we go. 
Let's see if this comes up now. I didn't. It, I believe it automatically disconnects if we take a look here. Yeah, it automatically disconnected it. So now we can go ahead and log in. We'll punch in our password here. A couple things we're going to do. We're going to install VMware tools and we're going to get uh, SSH functioning so that we can log in uh, using PuTTY. Uh, that's an old session. Oops. Um, PuTTY, uh, in case you are not familiar with it, is an awesome tool uh, to serial SSH, Telnet, etc. into devices and uh, operating systems. So we're going to get that going too. We can click next and just, uh, I don't send system info. No, we can ignore that for the moment. Next. And we're done. Okay. This is a, what it'll look like once uh, Ubuntu is installed. And now what we need to do is attach the CD-ROM that has uh, the VMware tools. So if you right click on this gray bar here and go to guest OS, install VMware tools. See down there, just attached it. Okay, now that we've attached the VMware tools ISO, we're gonna double click on this tar GZ file. And we're going to take this uh, folder here and we're just going to drag it to our desktop. And it should, yep, there we go. It starts to copy. We can close this. We can close this. Okay, we've now extracted the tar.gz file to our desktop. We need to open up the terminal here. So we can come over to these three dots, scroll down, open up the terminal. And let's see where we are. Okay. So we're going to do a change directory to desktop. And actually we could have done the change directory again because we need to do, we need to get into the VMware tools directory. So now we've gotten in there and from there we need to do a sudo and we're going to run actually before I do that, we'll do an LS to show you the files that are in there. We need to run this VMware dash install uh, script here. So we're going to type sudo. And we're going to do a dot forward slash VMware. Oops, helps if I type the right way. <laughs> and it's going to ask for our password. We're going to put that in. Uh, okay, so there's a bit of a process. In Windows, you just click the in install and uh, you answer a couple of questions and it's all uh, GUI based or GUI based. And uh, here it's all text based. So uh, yes, we want to proceed. Creating new VMware tools installate installer database. That's fine. I accept all the defaults on this. Yep, that's fine. Again, you can accept uh, all the defaults on this. That should be fine. Yes. And if you were to go into, let's close this for a second here, and actually go into our VM, you can see it says VMware tools is not installed in this vi virtual machine. And this error should clear after we get this installed. Open up browser console. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Again, I select all the defaults. I don't have, we don't have a crazy environment here. That should be more than enough. Generating certificate files. Uh, what's telling us is we need to restart our session. Um, I can. We'll just. You know. We'll just reboot it. Let's type reboot. It's going to go down. And yep. Okay. There you go. You see in the background it just cleared that VMware tools error. Once this comes back up, we are going to work on getting um, SSH installed and configured so that you can access your Ubuntu installation from PuTTY. All right, we've rebooted. The uh, VMware tools error is, has cleared. It's not what, really an error, it's just a, just a message stating that you don't have VMware tools installed. Um, once this gets back to the desktop here, we can go back to this little dotted square and we are gonna click all. And we're gonna find our terminal again. 
let's do a couple of things. Let's issue the command IP ADDR or IP address. Oops, not ID, IP. <laughs> okay, this is going to tell us what our IP is. So you can see it's 192.168.25.212. And right now, if we open up our PuTTY interface here and punch in that IP, it's going to tell you it can't network error connection refused because SSH is not set up. What we need to do is we need to install OpenSSH server. So you're going to issue the command sudo app install open SSH server. Enter our password. It's going to ask you, are you sure you want to continue? Yes. Okay. OpenSSH is installed. Let's check our system processes. So you're going to enter sudo system ctl status uh, open SSH. No, it's just SSH, sorry. And you can see it's active and it's running. Uh, if you have a firewall on, you will have to come to, let's get out of there. Uh, you will have to allow it through the firewall and we'll do that by issuing the command uh, sudo ufw allow ssh hit enter it's going to tell you the rules have been updated and now if you open up your putty session here and go to our ip the first time you go to it it's going to tell you the server's host key uh, is not cached in the registry you have no guarantees that the server is the computer you think it is it gives you all the Standard nomenclature, you can click yes, type in lab user, and then our password. And there you go. You can see we have we, we are now logged into our Ubuntu VM via SSH uh, with PuTTY. A good idea after you get everything installed is you can issue the command sudo app update, and it's going to go search for all the upgrade or any any of the latest updates and it's going to tell us there are 219 packages to um, upgrade um, you can enter the command sudo app upgrade and now it is going to go out and download all these updates and we can click yes and this will take a few minutes because there's like 300 something megs of updates so guys i hope you enjoyed this video pretty pretty simple basic uh, step to get your uh um, you know, your basic Ubuntu VM up and running. Um, now you can do whatever you wanted to do with it. Uh, we'll do another video. Uh, I'm working on installing, migrating my Plex server from uh, Windows over to Ubuntu. Uh, so we'll do another video on how to uh, install Plex and configure Plex on Ubuntu. So hopefully you like those videos, guys. Thank you for watching. Um, you can check out my website, achubbard.com for more and stay tuned for more IT-related videos.